Now, actually, now that I think about this here. And then isn't the H at the end, does it matter if we show it trans because we know that it's anti? So should we? This one here? Yeah. Does it matter even though like. Now, this is not, not a stereo center, so it doesn't make any difference in this point. But yeah, um, this would be. The water is coming in from the opposite direction to the mercury for steric hindrance reasons. So yes, this should be a anti-addition. Uh, this should be anti. Although I don't know when the when uh, the mercury should end up anti to the OH, but I don't know if the hydrogen is going to end up anti to the OH. Let's see what the book says about this. Sorry, in my notes it says. Yeah, the book actually says that, so let's go through this step by step. So uh, here we've got uh, the OH on this over here. Now, if you just stopped right here, you would get this product. But no one really wants this mercury-containing product. So now we want to replace this with the hydrogen. And it turns out that the reagents that do that are these reagents, which you basically just have to memorize. Uh, the textbook says, replacement of the mercury by the hydrogen is achieved by sodium borohydride through a complex and incompletely understood mechanism. So you're not going to expect to know the mechanism here. Apparently no one knows for sure what this mechanism is. So we're just going to memorize that we're replacing. We shouldn't be too surprised here that we're putting a hydrogen here because this is a source of H minus. This is a source of hydrogens. So we're going to have a hydrogen replacing the mercury over here. The textbook says this is not stereo specific, which means that you would get, if this was a stereo center, I guess you would get a mix of stuff. But um, that's a little advanced. I don't think you'd be tested on that in this class. I don't think they're going to give you a problem that they're going to get into the stereo specifics here because the mechanism is too complicated. The important thing here is, so the important thing is that the water is going on the more substituted carbon. That's what you're going to be tested on. The important part of this mechanism is that the water ends up on the, uh, that the water ends up on the more substituted carbon. That's the portion of the mechanism that you would be tested on. Okay, and then we would get these products over here. This is a reaction I didn't put in the handout, but now we went through it. I don't know if it's in the second language book either. Okay, was there a question? Um, so, okay, why would we do oxymercurization? Why, what, why wouldn't we? Well, I mean, if we could just do it with more, more simple, like BR2, why would we do it? Like, sure, that's a good question. Now, we wouldn't quite do it with BR2. Why wouldn't we just do this? Because this would put a bromine in. This would give you a bromine in the alcohol. if you do in the second step NABH4, that would replace the bromine with the hydrogen? I don't think so. So this NABH4 here specifically replaces this mercury. Uh, um, we, we, we haven't been told that it would, it would replace the bromine. And in fact, I doubt that it would. So this is not a general replace things with hydrogen mechanism. So this just replaces the mercury. So we start with an alkene and end up with an alcohol on the more substituted one and no other substituents, then you do oxymercurization. That's one way to have done that. That's right. Um, now, just uh, to back up for a second, so I guess this step is called the oxymercuration. Because we ended up putting on the oxygen group and the mercury. And this must be demercuration for obvious reasons, because we're getting rid of the mercury. Now, your question was a good one, because we've already learned another. So what does this do? This is a way to add, uh, to make a Markovnikov alcohol. This is a way to make it alcohol more carbonicobically. But what's, we, we've already learned a way to do that. Yeah, if we wanted to make that, why don't we just use the H2SO4? Plus water. Yeah, that's an excellent question. So let's talk about that. It's similar to H2SO4. So let's say we were just using the sulfuric acid and water approach. Well, we know the first thing that would happen is that we would protonate. And that would give us this. And then we would want the water to come in and attack. However, there's a big, so we said before, we should use this for synthesis if we want to put in an OH on the more substituted carbon. However, there's a big drawback to this mechanism. And the drawback is that it has a carbocation intermediate. We might have very briefly talked about this in the past. 
in general, it's better to try to do syntheses without carbocation intermediates. I don't know, is there, does anyone know what the reason is? What's the big problem with the carbocation intermediate? What do carbocations do that makes it hard to get a pure yield? Too often. What do carbocations do? Like the you're going to get a two, pro two products with them. Let's see. That would give you a slightly less pure yield, but I think we're going to get two products with the oxymercuration anyway. So that can't be the big deal right over there. There's something else that gives us an even bigger problem. Carbocations rearrange. Carbocations rearrange. Anytime you have a carbocation, there will be some rearrangement going on. And this is a, a huge problem with this whole hydration reaction that we learned before, because we probably want the water to end up on this carbon. However, this could very easily rearrange to put the carbocation over here, because those are equal in stability. That would form a secondary carbocation as well. So we could very easily have a situation Uh, that probably would be better if you're trying to make the Markovnikov. You can take a look at your answers. Uh, hopefully you'll get some sample exams and look at his answer key and see what he's doing in his answer keys. But it seems usually safer to use the oxymercuration because then you don't need to worry about rearrangements here. Uh, so what would happen here is that this might rearrange and th then we would sometimes get the water attacking this carbon, but sometimes we'll get the water attacking this carbon. And that would give us a mix of products, which is not what we want. The good thing about oxymercuration is that even though we said this had carbocation character, it's not a real carbocation, so we don't get rearrangements. Even though these have carbocation character, so to speak, they're not real carbocations, and we don't get rearrangements. So the advantage of having this mercurinium intermediate is it doesn't rearrange. Uh, uh, every once in a while, you'll see other things in the OCHEM class like that. There's all these little tricks in OCHEM that allow you to do syntheses while avoiding carbocations, because carbocations can give you rearrangements. Even, for example, we, we learned about, say, PBR3, right, and SOCl2 for halogenation. One of the main advantages of those is they give you ways to halogenate without carbocation intermediates. Um, that's the reason why we don't just do a normal SN2, say, with those reagents there. So this is another example of trying to avoid a carbocation intermediate over here. Okay, so now we've seen three different ways to add an alcohol. Um, one way to add the alcohol is sulfuric acid plus water. That's Markovnikov. And its disadvantage is that it has a carbocation intermediate, so you might get rearrangements. So, okay. So if we, if they give us an alkene, mm -hmm. and we end up with an alcohol on the more substituted one and no other substituents, then we should just stick to the mercury one. That seems safest. You certainly wouldn't lose credit for that. I don't know how picky your instructor is unless, about that. But. I mean, like, unless they tell us right. to use the H2 as a that's right. Now, the fact is, actually, hydration is still used a lot. Oftentimes, people don't worry about the rearrangement, or they think that it's not going to happen too much. So you'll really have to look at the answer keys to your sample exams to well, see like, what your instructor is doing. I but, mean, yeah. for synthesis problems... You certainly wouldn't lose credit for using the yeah, oxymercuration, like, demercuration. So it seems better in many cases to... It's safer to, to just use yeah, that versus... That's right. Okay. That's right. Okay, so for our summary again, sulfuric acid and water plus an alkene would give us the Markovnikov addition, but you might get carbocation rearrangements. And we've also seen uh, hydroboration oxidation, which is anti-Markovnikov. And now we've seen oxymercuration demercuration, which is also Markovnikov, but it can't rearrange. So it seems like it would be preferable for synthesis to the sulfuric acid plus water. 